The House of Representatives passed the Electoral Act Amendment Bill on Thursday. However, the lawmakers revised the compulsory direct primary clause, and the bill was passed after the removal of uh, Clause 84 requiring political parties to only select candidates through direct primaries. Now, recall that the Senate on Wednesday included the consensus mode of primaries in the Electoral Act Amendment Bill as suggested by President Mohamed Buhari and both chambers of the National Assembly. That's the Senate and the House of Representatives, however, um, you know, deleted the compulsory direct primaries from the bill. Uh, to help us analyze all of this, we do have a guest in the studio, I mean, via Zoom, uh, Shegun Shukpito, who is on standby. Uh, he's a public affairs analyst. It's good to have you join us this morning. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. All right. So for me, the question would be, um, wh what do you make of this, this pattern that uh, the House of Representatives and the senators have actually decided to take? I mean, first of all, there's a ton. They have deleted the compulsory clause of direct primaries. But you still have the senators bent on including the consensus uh, method of uh, electing their representatives. And the House of Representatives also not agreeing to that. So you have senators on the other hand saying, yes, it's okay to have direct primaries, indirect primaries, and the consensus. And then the House of Representatives not agreeing, only saying we want direct and indirect primaries. So what do you make of this, this new uh, route of things? Okay, so, um, you know, so uh, it's, um, first of all, it's not a surprise that the Senate and the House of Reps has uh, made a U-turn. Um, initially, what we had thought was that they were going to, you know, exercise their power to veto the president and just um, approve the law. Uh, but anybody that is familiar with Nigerian politics would, <laughs> would have been surprised if that had ever happened, you know, so... This U-turn is not surprising. Um, the, 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 the disagreement between the two houses, uh, I think, is a good thing. Um, I'm happy about it, and I hope that the House of Reps wins this debate. Um, so to have direct and indirect primaries as an option is a good thing, um, in my view, um, because this is a democracy and it's all about choice. So if the political parties say, um, that they, they would like to have the option, as provided in their constitution, to either use delegates to appoint or elect to elect their uh, the their representatives at the various elections, um, or use um, the direct primaries method. And I think it's they were within their rights. The consensus uh, option is a, is an entirely different matter. You know, it is extremely undemocratic. Um, um, for the for the simple reason that you, there is no way to determine, you know, what consensus is, who are the people that are supposed to arrive at that consensus? Must it be unanimous? Is there going to be voting? You know, and all of those things. So invariably, what you usually have is when they say consensus, it just means that the strong man in that party has determined who is going to be given a team. Shagun Shukpito, can you hear us? So I think we actually lost connection with him, but as soon as we're able to um, establish that connection, it would be a great one. But Kofi, yeah. so um, <laughs> as we proceed, yes, I really was, don't know. It, 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 was, it was quite interesting what, what he was what saying. What he was saying. Yes, indeed. Um, um, questioning the, uh, the democratic credentials of um, uh, this thing called consensus candidate. And he was asking uh, who to say or who is to you know to uh, arrive at the consensus who are those making the decisions and of course um, uh, uh, you know saying this would mean that there are certain strong men who continue to have uh, the power to decide and to pick to cherry pick who will be the candidates of the parties but but you know one of the things that he also said that i i pretty don't sit with is the fact that he agrees with the disagreement that's going on now let's not forget the the bone of contention between here. both houses yeah between both houses as much as we don't expect them to you know okay. always uh, align and have to be in sync but we're looking at the essence of this bill and the, the critical element in the bill. At the end of the day, we're talking about the transmission of results electronically that was outrightly rejected by these lawmakers. Now, it, it, it therefore, because looking at it, it would begin to look like 
maybe this is also a delayed tactic because we're looking at time as well. Uh, let's not forget that there's also a time factor where this bill should be uh, given assent by the president because with this back and forth, uh, I, I don't know if the House of Reps would actually come to that point where they agree yes. and then we have to send it back to the president for the president to assent and then before it becomes, you know, a law. I, 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 so I, but with all of this, no. I, I'm just thinking that those I, I, who are saying that I, this is I, delayed I, tactics yeah, I, are just I, I think, so we don't see, arrive at see, that I, particular I think, highlight. I think, I think, I think Nigerians are um, unhealthily over pessimistic when it comes to the National Assembly. No, I don't think that's the can case. I, can, Messi, can I? Can okay, I go please? ahead. Yes, thank you very much. Um, you know, you know, so far they are they're not doing badly. I mean, the bill was sent back to them. They went on the uh, end of year recess. Um, they have resumed, and as they have resumed, they're already working on it. I mean, how many days did it take for them to pass this? It's already been passed by the House of Reps. The Senate is also going to pass. And then you have what you call a conference committee. This conference committee is going to be uh, the committee regarding this particular issue on both the House and the Senate. They'll, they'll harmonize and then they'll pass a joint bill. I mean, they, they have a lot of other things to do apart from this, this electoral bill. So, so the business of, of, of legislation is not... It's not, it's not something you just do one day. But you can you also do everything not, in one day. But you can also yeah, not take out relax. the politics. No, it's not a matter of relax. Mm -hmm. We're just talking about the interest no, these here. Guys, interest these guys are, are, are doing what they do. And we already we are crying they are delaying. No, no. You know, it's, it's not about they doing they have, what they do. Have they expunged the... The, the electoral uh, electronic uh, transition of votes from the bill. So no. why do we even have it in the first place? I mean, look look it, at the it, fact it, that... Mercy, if they didn't... And I, I, I know that, you know, these politicians give us reasons to be pessimistic, you know, several times over several... Th I understand that. But it's not all doom and gloom, you know. We, uh, as, uh, we have a guest <laughs> back, so let's, let's allow him to do the talking. Uh, uh, Mr. Shegun Shopito is a, a public affairs yeah. analyst. Uh, Mr. Shopito, can you hear us, please? Yes, absolutely. Sorry about um, that little break in transmission. Mm, not a problem at all. So Thank you can you go ahead with your thoughts. Again. Yeah, so, so I was saying, um, you know, so you know, the, the, the consensus alternative is, is undemocratic because it simply allows um, one guy somewhere. So in the case of ABC, it would probably be Tinobu if it's at the, you know, if it's in the Southwest, you know, or maybe at Buhari, you know, at the national level. You know, if it's at the state level, then the governors always will tell you. I mean, I remember um, running up to the 2019 elections, um, Governor Ibikuni Amosu of Ogun State, at that time, you know, I remember, I mean, it was, was, was appalling for me personally to see him raising the hands of um, candidates and saying this is the senator for this uh, this zone, this is the House of Reps member for this one. He was practically telling members of the party who the tickets had been given to. That is not democracy. So um, I agree with the House of Reps that you know to expunge that particular um, provision in that law. Yes, you can bring back the option of um, indirect primaries if that's what the political parties want. Well, it, it, it's okay. We, we would have preferred. Uh, to have direct primaries forced on, on on the political parties because that would uh, better indicate what the, mem the general uh, membership of the parties want. However, we also know that the direct primaries alternative comes with a, with a lot of challenges. One of those challenges, the very obvious one is, these parties don't have proper um, a member register. So what would the voter register be? for direct primary. So all of those things also need to be sorted out. If they are sorted out, then the direct primaries is absolutely the best option that we can have um, to deepen you know, our democratic experience. Um, so my hope is that the House of Reps wins this debate and that the consensus alternative is um, expunged from that bill. I'm sure that the president will not object to that. All the president is saying is, if you have direct primaries only, then you know you force the parties. It's expensive. I think monitoring this will be impracticable. Blah blah blah. Yes, I agree with some of those things, but I think that it's definitely the direct, direct direction we need to move in. Um, so all things being equal, fingers crossed. Uh, we hope that the House of Reps wins this debate and they get this bill across to the president as quickly as possible um, over the next couple of weeks so that the president can give us sense before we now start talking of, oh, we're too close to the next elections and therefore we're not going to, I'm not going to ascend 
you know, to this, to this, to this law. Uh, Mr. Chopitor, um, interesting one from you. Um, you've talked about, you know, the fact that the consensus uh, provision in this re-amended um, Electoral Act amended bill is, um, is, is something to be worried about and it's anti-democratic. I'm not quoting you there. But, um, I mean, even if it wasn't included, um, aren't we, I mean, is it not safe to say that there will still be these uh, cherry picking and imposition of candidates by political godfathers, even under uh, uh, direct or indirect primaries, you know, because um, we've seen we've 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 seen uh, uh, conventions and primaries by the political parties where delegates go and cast their votes, but they've already decided who they're going to vote for before now. And most of these um, delegates, these political party delegates from the ward levels down to, you know, uh, yeah, the ward levels of the parties. Are, are subject and are loyal, for instance, to the governors of the states. These governors are the leaders of the party who place them there and wouldn't go against their will. So even if we were director in the primaries, one would argue that um, the leader will still have his, his way. Um, yes, you, you, you do have a point. Um, so there would always be that, you know, um, in Nigerian politics. And I think anywhere in the world, actually, you know, you would always have uh, strong party members that are influential and that will give instructions slash directives to members and that will follow those instructions slash directives. However, what um, the direct primary option in particular does is that it makes it more difficult for the Godfather to do this. So you could then have a situation where particular uh, member of the party decides that he's not going along with any consensus and he has a right to, to, to he has, you know, he has a right to express his, um, um, his, his franchise and his right to be voted for. So he, he, he presents himself against the wishes of the party hierarchy. Now, because you are doing direct primaries, for the, for the um, leadership or the strong man or the governor of the party to have his way, he would have to bribe, you know, Three million, four million members, you know, as the case will depending on the size of the party, as against bribing maybe three hundred delegates, you know. So it's 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 more difficult. So clearly, the advantages of, um, of 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 having a direct primary far are very very obvious, you know. Um, makes life difficult for for these uh, godfathers, and, and 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 I guess that's why they are they are so strongly opposed to it, and they want. The indirect primary option also included, so you 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 won't be able to do away with Godfatherism entirely just by you know one simple act of, of of the National Assembly, but you will make it more difficult, and you and you level the playing field for people who want to be outliers and rebels within the party structure who want to say you know what I have a right out of it. I don't care what uh, Ogara Jagaban or whoever the strong man might be is saying I want to try my luck, and if he has the resources and he has the popularity and he has the network on his own to convince, you know, the general membership of his party to, to vote for him, then, then he, has, he stands a chance. Let's not forget that this is not just about the national election. It's not just about the presidency. It's not just about the gubernatorial election. It's about elections at all levels across board. So, you know, um, I think this really, really, having direct primaries as an option um, would really level the playing field and hopefully with time, allow us to get better quality um, leadership, imagine, you know, onto the tickets, and then people can then vote in the general elections. Okay, so um, first, uh, I'd, I'd like to ask you if you see uh, the upper house and the lower house coming to a point of consensus, coming to that point of uh, compromise where they will be speaking in one voice and having that bill being passed to the president for accent. That's on the one hand. On the other hand, some people are of the opinion that um, this is just another way, it's a process of just delaying the, the entire accent to it because at the time, uh, it would just become impossible and the president might just say, the timing is not right and then we will just pass it again and fall back to the Electoral Act of 2010 or 2011. Yeah, so um, on the first question, they always do. They don't have a choice, you know. So they would always they form their usual committee and harmonize. Um, uh, my only hope is that they do it on time. 
they will do it. There's no doubt about that. Somebody will win the day eventually. Um, I hope, like I said before, by the winner you know, of this argument or this debate or this battle will be the House of Reps because their position, I think, is more representative of the wishes of um, of Nigerians. Um, so, so the, 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 the hope now is that they do it on time, so that um, just like you said, we don't then now lend credence to the conspiracy theories that um, these guys really don't have the intention of signing this bill in the first place. That all of this is just gamesmanship, so that they will be seen to have tried. But that they want to run the 2022, uh, 2023 general elections on the 2010. Um, amended act rather than this 2021 act um, or bill. You know, so so the earlier they get their acts together and get this to the president, the better for all of us. And I know that there are some uh, members of um, both houses that actually are desirous of seeing uh, this act go through because you know it actually improves their own chances as well of of returning. Uh, it's not all of these um, legislators that have the apparatus to rig elections, you know, and this act will definitely make rigging much more difficult. So it's in their interest to get, you know, this this, this act passed, and, and I think that we will do it. I think they will get it across to the president in the next two weeks at the most, and the president will not have a choice but to sign, you know, because after this, then we have no other um, excuse. So I really don't believe in those conspiracy theories. I think that the president will sign once, once that singular concern has been expressed. Let's not forget that um, uh, has been addressed, pardon me. Let's not forget that he, 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 the president didn't raise any other issue. The extensive explanation that he gave all revolved around the decision of the legislature to, to force the direct primary option on the political parties. So once they fix that, then I believe he will sign. Uh, Mr. Shopito, you've um, you've uh, uh, talked about you know you've, uh, the, the the inclusion of that controversial clause 84 and uh, uh, the need to have direct primaries as a panacea to um, rigging or um, lack of internal democracy, let's say, in 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 our political parties. But um, uh, when you talk about political pa political parties and the need to have uh, um, um, direct primaries um, compulsorily so that we have everyone who can, can make a choice, make a choice for the party. Now we can go back to the 1992 elections and option A4, um, which meant that as candidates, you had to go from you know, the, the, the state or even ward level down before going to, yes, ward level down to the state, from the state to the national level, like uh, Abiola and Kingibe did, um, uh, Tofa did, sorry. Uh, but, but, but some persons in, on the political landscape still believe that the direct primaries would have been a long shot. And I'm referring to the Interparty Advisory Committee, which is a group of political parties. They are the ones who um, are, f are bearing the, 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 the expenses and are feeling the heat. So if the Interparty Advisory Committee is saying, thank heavens that we're not having direct primaries, um, shouldn't we be listening to them and understanding that this would not have worked for the parties? Yeah. I, I, you, you make a very good point, and that's why I said that even though um, for the good of our democracy, on the long run, this is the way to go, uh, but at the moment, the practical reality on the ground is that the direct primaries option will not work. Um, you know, and you know, this has been tried um, in the recent past, um, in the off-cycle election in Edo State, um, some of the elections in Lagos State as well, you know, the direct primaries option was used. <laughs> and one of the controversies that we had was, you know, having a voter, you know, the number of voters that, that, that voted in some of those elections far supposedly voted, far exceeding the number of members of, of APC. You know, so we know that, and we know that this, this, these challenges are there. So if, if I next, if this, this clause had been passed, and direct primaries have been made compulsory. The first thing I would have had to do would have been to verify the voters register. How's that going to be done? I mean, how would that happen? <laughs> you know, because you know, um, with the um, national voter register that is run and managed by INEC, it's biometrically verified who these individuals are. All 
um, all uh, 60 something million or some something million, whatever the numbers are now, registered voters can be individually verified with their fingerprints and with their face. You know, so on the on the party level, you know, is that possible? Do they use biometric machines? You know, so what will happen is that the parties will simply come up with fictitious names and they will do whatever elections that elections in quotes that they want to do. You know, so uh, I, I really, really think, you know, so for, for, us, for us in the civil society space, yes, we love the direct primary option, but we have to be pragmatic. It would have been, have been a terrible, terrible, terrible blow if that bill had been passed with that direct primary as the only alternative. In fact, it would have been guilty. It would have really, really degenerated into something. Uh, it could have snowballed um, beyond um, um, intended or anticipated consequences. Or consequences, because you, you will then have people going to court to try and say, "Look, <laughs> there is no voter register in my party. Where did these voters come from?" You know, and that will then, you know, uh, spill, over, spill over into the general elections, and you could really have a chaotic situation. So, I think it's a good thing that the indirect primary option has been. Uh, has been allowed. I think most of the parties, most of the big, the big, at least the big two parties, will definitely up for that. It's easier for them. But what I think we need to do as citizens and as civil society is to begin to push to get the parties to clean up their act in terms of how they manage their member register. We need to push for that now so that the direct primaries can become a viable alternative as we go further down the, the road, maybe targeting the 2027 elections, for example, to be a realistic option to say, look, the parties will, will need to invest in biometric devices and, and, um, and, and, and come up with verifiable um, register of members so that direct primaries can then be used. Okay, so that happens, I think, I think this is a good move. All right, let's quickly look at the, the role of civil society right now. I mean, civil society organizations are of the opinion that uh, the introduction of the clause of consensus by uh, the Senate, that's the upper house, would actually lead to litigation at the end of the day. And they are planning a protest. So the, the question is, of what impact would the protest, you know, um, add? What impact is the protest in all of this? Well, you know, the, the impact of the process, uh, the protest will depend on you and I, basically, the ordinary Nigerian out there. Um, if we support the protest, if we make it loud enough, um, and then it will have an impact. You know, you know, one of the things that most people don't realize is that the politicians are afraid of the people. <laughs> they understand that it's a game of numbers. They're afraid of us. Um, but they also, and it's because of that fear that they have, very smartly over time, and I'm not talking two years or three years, over time, the Nigerian political system has been designed in such a manner as to ensure that the people never come together. So poverty has been weaponized, um, division along ethnic, religious lines have been weaponized to ensure that we don't unite behind one cause. Every single time that Nigerians have united behind one cause and our and our cries have been um, um, uh, cohesive um, and and um, and and, and uh, powerfully put forward. We have prevailed, you know, every single time. So if you just look back over the last three or four years, every single issue that people have protested about, you know, when we say protest, protest doesn't have to be about street protest alone. You know, online now, social media is very powerful. The politicians are there as well. They hear those things, you know. So. Protest online, protest offline, go to the streets, go to the TV stations, go to the radio, call up radio, whatever. Just voice your position to this thing. They will listen. They don't have a choice. You know? so, so I think everybody needs to support the civil society position regarding this consensus thing. Consensus is one of the greatest evils you know, in our political system. It's one of the biggest problems. Because what that does is that it allows some guy in his bedroom and his kitchen to determine who is going to be our next governor, who's going to be our next senator, who's going to be our next rep, um, even if that person is completely undeserving and lacking in merit. So you know, so you have area boys and touts and motor park guard now having Mr. Shopito, can you can you hear us please? Are you there, sir? Okay, uh, it's quite interesting what he's talked about, you know, area boys and uh, and girls. Um, I listened to someone say, you know, in, in some states in Nigeria, we have, um, of course, four tiers of government, not three. 
uh, we have the federal, federal, we have the state, we have the local government. And area and boys. Agbero <laughs> is the fourth one. <laughs> but, 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 you know... Go, he, go to the streets, uh, you, you may understand what that person is talking about. And for me, it's really surprising that uh, these persons ought to be very patriotic of democracy and want to defend our... I mean, as a lawmakers we're talking about, to even think about introducing uh, the clause or having the element of consensus in a democratic setting, it's... It's uh, it's not really thoughtful for me, and um, I'm just wondering what would actually preempt that. But like you have mentioned, as much as we don't have that as constitutionally being backed up or a structure or recognized, it's something that exists and we cannot. And that has always played a role in our elections year in, year out. And I don't know, I'm also thinking that, you know, 2023 might not be different. I'm sure you you're know, saying you know, that. Well, so you, you, you go down to the institutions of higher learning. Um, you know, these are institutions that are meant to, um, you know, uh, to, to, to produce, be the production uh, factory for the leaders of the country, the, the framers of our society, um, those the thinkers of, of our society. And what do you see when you talk about the, 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 the play, play politics in, in school, which people take seriously and fight over? The, you, you, see, you see people who contest for elections, a campaign, and on the day of the election, maybe students' union government, for instance, you won't see their, their names on the ballot. You see maybe one or two names or just one name, and you say, but I don't know this pain ever campaign. Where is his name coming from? Because some, some godfathers in the school, uh, probably in the management or former uh, students who have left and have refused to move on with their lives, decided we're going to choose someone to be the SEG president. And so they graduate from the schools with this... Mindset. This mindset to say it's part of politics that we are the elders who can sit down and decide who should be um, uh, uh, the, 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 the candidate. But then again, then again, it's politics. You can look at it on the other side, you know, to say um, sometimes this allows for the best person to emerge. In some situations, let me explain what I mean. Okay. In some situations, you see, we have um, high voter uh, illiteracy in, in the country. Mm -hmm. People don't know the right questions to ask. Um, that's why in some cases, the worst of us are ruling the rest of us. When it should be the best of us ruling the rest of us. Now, when the worst of us rule the rest of us, even the best of us will become like the worst of us. So everybody has to, to, to go down. You, you would see somebody who is so enlightened and has a lot of um, qualifications fighting on the street because someone needs his car or because of bad road or poor traffic just, management. Just as, we, just as we, you know, we talked about the blows that actually was exchanged where? yesterday by... Yeah. You see someone driving should... roughly because he has to... Because, I mean, so everybody has become, you know, this way because we have the, um, in some instances, the worst of us ruling the rest of us. So the reason is also, you know, that the, the voting public, you talk to the politicians, I've, I'm speaking to a lot of them over the course of the past few years and all that, and, and they'll tell you that the voters, the, the, the delegates, for instance, and even the voters out there, they don't give one kobo about your ideas. They don't care. Down the grassroots, they simply do not care. A lot of people who have, have had good intentions going out to campaign, going to the grassroots to meet the electorate, or me reaching out to delegates. They, they've had to change their methods because these guys simply just do not care about your So they're ideas. after the money. What is in it for me? So, so, what, so what, what, you what, know, what, in, the, in, in, in the course yeah. of this conversation... So, so, so I was about mm -hmm. to say that these people may not have the capacity to, to intelligently um, uh, elect the best. They will go for the person who is their brother. They'll go for the person who we've been seeing. We've been knowing this man for years. He's been there. He's been giving us keke. Or um, he, he, he looks like us. He talks like us. He's street. And won't go for the best. So in, in some, in some instances... So, so I, I don't think that the people just woke up and became the way they were. I don't think that the people just decided that they would not think about it. Like he's mentioned, he, he talked about the fact that, you know, poverty has been weaponized. And we cannot rule out the fact that there's so much poverty in the land. And some people will tell you that corruption and poverty and people not thinking straight, not an excuse, but, the, you know, that's a thing. So usually people just, 
it's a mindset. It's a culture that has been, um, you know, that have been practiced over time because that's how cultures actually. Happen. I can give. I can give an example. It happens over and over again, yeah. and then it becomes a norm, and everybody feels like this is this is what it is. And so someone started this trend. Someone started this pattern, and then over time the people grabbed it and believed that this is it. And so if you look at the trend of things now, this I always say that there's you know an issue of a trust deficit. People no longer trust the system. Mm -hmm. People no longer trust what you can say because that pattern had already been started by a politician and people have bought it and it has become a culture. And so when you come around, uh, the first thing we're asking is, see, because we, we know that when you go, that's all. So what can we get for the now? See, that, 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 that's a part of it. But trust me, when you hit, this, when you hit the road um, and you go down to the, the delegates, Okay, the delegates. Do, it's not about not trusting the system. Uh, they are they are the system. But we, we, we have our guests back on the line. Um, Mr. Shegun Shopetong, can, can you hear us, please? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, all right. Sorry I mean, about that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about about about, about that. But <laughs> but um, um, um uh, you know, talking about the the you know, having this this debate here in the studio, the consensus candidate um, uh, candidates. Uh, is it always negative? Is it always you know, a, a bad thing. Is there, is there, are there some good aspects to this as well? Especially when you look at how our electorates and our delegates think. Um, you know, so looking for a good element of the consensus candidates, the, like, the consensus alternative is like um, assuming that the, the political uh, uh, big wigs uh, like this magnanimous parent who knows what is best for their children. And regardless of what the children want, um, they will make a choice for them. And at the end of the day, it will, it will, it, everything will work out well. So I decide what cost my, my son or my daughter is going to read in school. That, that's the analogy, you know. And, and we know now with modern parenting, we know that that's not true. You have to allow the child to make up his mind what he wants to do. Or you look at what his skill sets are and all that, and what his proclivities are, and then allow him to gravitate in that direction. We can't assume that some big wig in some political party somewhere has the best interest of the majority of people at heart and is going to pick the person that he knows will be better for all of us. Who is he? Is he God? So no, I don't think there's anything positive about the consensus thing at all. Um, I think that you have to allow the people at the end of the day, if you allow the people to make their choices, they will make smart choices. They are not being allowed. What we have had over the last, um, at least in this fourth republic, for example, has been that the choices have been made for us. Just think about all the elections from 1999 to today. Choices have been made for us. We have always had to choose between the devil and the deep blue sea, between a, a, you know, a red devil and a black devil. They've always been devils. You know, we've never really had options. So. Um, and that is because of all of this, um, uh, the, the way the entire political system has been rigged up to, to, to function. So, you know, like the weaponization of poverty, the weaponization of illiteracy, you know, um, uh, weaponization of uh, division, of, of, of fault lines, all of those things are designed to ensure that we do not make the right choices. So they can make choices for us until we um, um, fight for a system where the majority of the people are the ones calling the shots with regards to who is going to run our affairs. Then we'll continue to have, just like you were saying, the worst of us, you know, running affairs of the, for, for, for the rest of us. And, you know, we will never make progress as society like that. So consensus should be thrown out of the window. It should be, in fact, it should be outlawed. You know, so it, it shouldn't be a case of, oh, our party constitution allows it. It should be, it should be prohibited. This act, if um, the House of Reps will win their argument, they should go a step further by prohibiting it in, in its entirety. Okay. Uh, Mr. Uh, yeah. Uh, 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 the, 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 at a point, this was, you know, uh, between, it was a tussle between the uh, leg federal legislatures, legislators rather, and the governors. Um, would you say this is now, can be seen, can this now be seen as a victory for the governors? Um, the, the, the concern of the legislators, of course, they were practicing uh, the, the law of, of self-preservation, <laughs> basically saying we need to also <laughs> take the power away from the government yeah. so we can, we can go back to the house and enjoy our, ourselves or work, do the hard work we've been doing. But um, how can, how can you know, Nigerians um, um, ensure that the governors do not continue to wield the power they're wielding to pick who they want to pick 
and that there's internal democracy in the political parties? I think that is a fantastic question because it actually speaks to the heart of one of the things that I consider to be our biggest problems as a society. Um, so when our governance structures, you know, civil civil service system, you know, and, and political systems became centralized by the military, um, what happened was that they also centralized our thinking pattern as a people. So you now find that by default, um, almost instinctively and subconsciously, everybody turns the searchlight towards Abuja and Asurok. And we are, you know, um, um, <laughs> heckling the president, um, attacking the uh, legislators to a lesser degree, but yes, we do that. And we forget completely that there's a sort of national government um, uh, level of governance. We have governors who have commissioners. We have state houses of assembly uh, where state laws that have serious impact on our lives are made. Uh, we have local governments where laws are made, by the way, as well. But people don't know this, right? So um, to begin to fix the problem of the power that the governors build, the first step is that we as a people need to turn the searchlight not away from Abuja, we need to get a bigger satellite so that we're pointing the satellite at Asoro and at um, the three arm zone. But we're also pointing it at the state government houses and we're pointing it at the state houses of assembly. And we're pointing it at, so get three satellites and look at the federal, the state, and the local government level for everything that we're doing, for all the accountability, for all the heckling, for the demand, the demand for transparency and whatever else we're doing. You know. So civil society, for example, has to understand this. We need to, we need to, we need to come together, uh, build structures that can better um, um, interrogate what is going on at the state level. Because when we do that, then the governors can be put a bit in check and realize, hey, people are looking at me. Right now, they know that the attention is away from them. The attention is, um, you know, turned towards Abuja by the majority of Nigeria. So everybody is attacking Buari. But what about what the governor is doing? We know that they're not doing well at the federal level, but what about what your governor is doing? You know, what happens to the federal allocation? We know that the current revenue allocation system is, is, is nonsensical and will not bring about development. But money is still shared to the governors. What do they do with these monies? Who's asking the questions? What happens to the security votes? So until these questions are asked, the governors continue to wield this power and they continue to determine who becomes a local government chairman. You know, I listened to Governor Wiki the other day when he was talking about the issue of suits. And you know, he just said any local government chairman that is found not um, um, properly looking at this uh, local refinery issue will be removed from office. You know, I mean, that, like, that's shocking. These guys are not your appointees. <laughs> they were, they're supposed to be elected representatives of their own people. But this is how the governor sees this, you know, this entire thing. They are gods, they are local emperors in their domains, and, and whatever they want happens. And when they come together as a force, they are actually very powerful and they influence what happens at the national level. Okay. So we need, to, we, need to, we need to come together and try to checkmate these governors by putting a bit more attention okay. to what's happening at that level. So as, as we begin to coast the conversation down now, um, I'd like to ask, do you think that we should consider making legislation for the principle of zoning and allowing political parties to actually uphold that? Um, zoning, another conversation again, and this is a conversation that is similar to the concept of federal character, uh, quota systems, and what have you. And I have never really supported those things. I think they kill, uh, they kill uh, meritocracy. They promote, they promote mediocrity and kill meritocracies. Um, so now, um, is zoning good? Maybe at a particular stage in our, our political history and our, and our development as society, yes, it will be probably, you know, you can say where well, there's an argument for it, you know, just for inclusiveness and to ensure that everybody has this, our so-called sense of belonging. But um, absolutely not. I don't think any legislation should be made to, 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 to force this on the political parties. I think it's, a, it's an argument of convenience 
amongst the politicians. You know, let's not forget that these guys are not thinking about you and I. They're thinking about their interests. So the reason they go after the zoning arrangement is so that their own turn can come. You know, but at some point, the thing would have gone around enough for us to be able to say enough and no further. So no, we shouldn't um, legislate zoning. In fact, you know, my own um, agitation is even the federal character principle at some point must be expunged. You know, I know there's provision for affirmative action and all of those things, but it cannot be the major consideration when you are trying to select who runs the affairs of your country. If you do that, then you're going to kill off um, um, the chances for you to get the best people to, to run your affairs. So, no, I, I think we have to run away from that. No. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Shafto, interesting that you don't want to see, uh, you want the federal character also uh, uh, abolished as well. I mean, even even in in, in the super eagles, we we see that um, they also try out, try to balance things out to have federal character. But anyway, um, um, you, you you've said you would love to see direct primaries um, as a provision in uh, electoral law. Um, should we be thinking about going back to uh, 1992 um, and? possibly having a, a two-party state. That way, some would say, you know, this issue of the cost and the uh, difficulties with logistics of organizing direct primaries may be uh, surmounted. Is, is that something that Nigeria should consider? Would it be good for our democracy? Um, no, no, it won't be good for our democracy. I mean, so first of all, in truth, what we're running at the moment is a two-party state to a large extent. You know, you've got the APC and you've got the PDP, and that's it. Um, for the serious imports, the serious positions, your candidates would always, the winners would always emerge from those, those parties. But because it's a democracy and it's all about participation and inclusion, you know, you cannot legislate a two party state. Um, what, what happened in 1992 happened because we we're fledgling democracy, we we're experimenting. Um, and eventually, the space would have, would have been opened up because that's just the way democracy is run. It's all about ability of everybody to express themselves as they so wish. Freedom of expression, freedom of association, all of those things are very, very critical to the democratic process. So, no, we shouldn't have a two-party state. No, we shouldn't legislate that. In fact, we should expand the space a bit more. However, we need to have checks and balances to ensure that what we saw um, leading up to 2015 and then 2019 to a lesser degree, mm -hmm. not where you have 92 parties presenting candidates. So, you know, what they do in that part of the world, more advanced democracies, is you've got some sort of a collegiate system or a league system where some parties can only participate at certain levels until they have met certain um, uh, benchmarks and then they can be promoted in quotes to the next level. So you can run at the local government level, produce a chairman or two, you know, and then on the back of that success, you'll be allowed to, to contest, you know, maybe the, the, the House of, um, the, the state's houses of assembly and the governorship. And then if you succeed to a certain degree at that level, and it goes to the national level. We can do that. Um, so, but what that does is it allows people to join the parties that best express their own ideological leanings or whatever other um, reason that you have for joining a particular political party. But I don't think that we should, uh, we should um, reduce the space. I think the space should be expanded a bit more in a, oh. in a, in a well coordinated manner. Well, well, as as that you know sounds uh, very awesome. As, as that sounds very good because it's it's a case of saying. Um, we can't make legislation for a two-party system or return to a two-party system. But it's okay uh, to see that over the years, I mean, if you look at the elections, you, you constantly find the dominance of just two-party, uh, despite the fact that you have several political parties. And one would be thinking, uh, why don't we rather start making laws you know, to that effect? Just as saying, uh, yes, consensus should not be uh, should be taken out of the clause. It doesn't promote democracy. But we still see that play in party, you know, at the party level, talking about the political parties at this point in time. However, we hope that we get to that point where, um, you know, our democracy becomes very democratic. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, <laughs> contribution and analysis from you. Uh, um, um, thank you very much for your time, sir. And, uh, of course, uh, we hope to have you again some other time on the breakfast and of course uh, to analyze developments in a national policy thank you very much mr shagun shopito uh, is a public affairs analyst thank you always a pleasure to be here mm. have a great day. Right. Uh, very interesting mercy um 2023 <laughs>
three is around the corner. You know, yesterday some people were really going back to uh, that video where um, Ashiwaju, uh, you know, I promised. Promise. Yeah, he promised. Uh, he talked about the, the PVC <laughs> that expired. And um, for me, for me, it was about the women, the, the ladies who visited him. But you, know, you, didn't, you didn't say that yesterday. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. So is it that you, yeah, you, I, took, I, I, you took a closer it, look? It, 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 people, it was so, people were still talking about it, mm. you know. Um, you know, the yes from, from the, the women, women around. What are you trying as, to do if, now? As if they knew, <laughs> they already knew, you know. So um, people are, are going to be jostling for these opportunities uh, to meet with these politicians, to, to um, uh, impress them, you know, and also to get, you know, some things from them. Um, and the political landscape is reading with uh, all sorts of interests and all sorts of people. You know, so, so, so the question here would be, um, have, we, do, have we really learned anything? Would there be anything new? Will Nigerians act differently uh, in 2023, looking at all of the elections that we've had from 1999 up until this point? Yes, yes, so, that's so a good that question. Would be, that, that's one question. We'll, look, uh, uh, we'll, we'll see how this thing unfolds. But, but it's important, it's very important for, I think, uh, a lot of um, experts have said, you know, uh, experts in, in, in politics and democracy within and outside Nigeria, that the educated class in the country needs to um, step up, you know, those in the middle, those who have um, the, elites, the, the middle, the lower middle class, you know, step up and then do the enlightenment for those in their communities to educate them to say, you need to elect people based on what they have to offer you in terms of ideas, not in terms of rice or materials or 5,000 naira. Anyway, we'll keep talking about <laughs> the Nigerian polity as the days draw closer to the 2023 election. That's been a, the size of a package on The Breakfast this morning. Mercy? If you miss out on any part of the conversation, it's all right to follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa. And on YouTube, subscribe to YouTube as a Plus TV Africa Lifestyle and Plus TV Africa. I am Messi Bopo. Do have a fantastic Friday. And I'm Kofi Bartels. We'll return on Monday. Keep watching Plus TV Africa.